Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for coming. Um, I'm Martin uh, Lucas Smith. I'm one of the developers um, of Cycle Streets, um, which is one of the earliest routing projects. Um, we started in in 2008, um, and it's it's great to be here again. And thank you all for coming to this talk. Um, I've been using OpenStreetMap for a long time now, obviously, and I spend a lot of time looking at the data model and how we route over it and how cartographically it's represented as well. Um, and I believe that the time has come to look at the data model and say, are we missing a certain couple of concepts? Because um, I think there are things that are actually quite hard to do and there are compromises that we have um, in, in the model. Um, so just briefly, background, um, Cycle Street, so we started in 2008, we have a rather old looking website which will be improved shortly, um, but most of our routing, millions millions per month, comes through our data interface, our API. So if for example you're in London, you've probably heard of CityMapper, um, which is, uh, uses routing from us. Um, and we have a whole range of routing, uh, APIs, sorry, routing from A to B, circular routing, um, user management, uh, infrastructure, auditing, photographs, GPS tracking, and so on. Um, and again, briefly, just before I get onto the actual subjects of my talk, um, the routing engine that we've, we've developed um, over the last 10 years covers different types of routing from a, a quiet route, a fastest route, and a, a sort of balanced bicycle route between the two. We have hundreds of rules that we kind of combine to, to sort of emulate how a cyclist thinks as they move around. Um, we look in detail at the infrastructure. So, for example, a, a cycle lane that's narrow, we often give a negative score to rather than a positive score because actually that can encourage people to drive closely. Um, we analyze every junction, so things like left turns and right turns are handled differently. Um, we have uh, the, the engine covers different elevation um, sources which are combined and smoothed out, uh, resampled, and so on. And we have full support for route relations. So, we're trying to get a really good modeling of, of, of cycling. So I think, for me, the fundamental problem is that we're trying to represent the real world, which is the space, as lines. Um, and I think there are lots of compromises that come as a result of, 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 this, uh, of this sort of approximation of, of the world. Um, so I'm going to go through various uh, examples of how the, the sort of problem, I think, that, that comes from this. and then offer a couple of suggestions, and these are by no means to finalise the ideas as such, but at least I hope it will, will start a discussion within the community. So here we have um, uh, the, the, the tunnel in Amsterdam um, going under the, the main uh, railway, and as you can see it's one, as I call it, conceptual space, it's a tunnel through which people travel, but it has multiple flows. On the, le on the left we obviously have a, a footway which is, uh, has a, a surface, it's five meters wide. And on the right, we have a, -dire a, a bi-directional cycleway, um, which is uh, segregated from the pavement. How is this represented in OpenStreetMap? Well, it's represented as two tunnels. Um, the one on the left uh, is, uh, that's not highlighted is the cycleway. And it has the name, as you can see on the, on the map, just on the top right there, you can see it has the name. Um, and it has attributes like its surface and, and, and so on. And on the right-hand side, we have the, foot, the footway, which is separately marked as a tunnel. So there are two tunnels, uh, apparently, um, and uh, it doesn't have a name. So if you're doing pedestrian routing, you now, have the, uh, you now have the task of associating the name of the cycleway with the adjacent footway, which is not always a very easy GIS task, particularly depending on how you, how you split out the, the way. Um, so here is an example from Cambridge, where I live. Um, this is a, a seven-lane highway. Um, there are two lanes for traffic. There is a single directional cycle lane on one side. There is another single directional cycle lane on the other side. There is then a contraflow on the left. If you can see, the pavement has then got a contraflow cycleway. And on the right-hand side, there's a pavement. So there, is, there are seven separate flows here. How do we represent this? Well, <laughs> with difficulty, I think. Um, but this is what the real world is like. Um, OK, you don't always have a contraflow, but if you imagine junctions, you can often end up with very complicated situations. So we're trying to do more and more with OpenStreetMap. 
you know, back in 2008, we wanted to make a map, then people wanted routing, and then there's uh, analysis and so on. Um, we're trying to get um, better and better um, apps and routing that, that, that really, re you know, really is high quality. But really, I think that the model is becoming too basic for the real world. So how do we model this one? Well, here's the 2008 method. It's nice and simple. We have highway equals primary. It's a main road. And we have cycleway equals track. I mean, you can debate if it's a track or a line. Um, and that will give you a reasonable level of cycle routing. Sorry? The street name is Hills Road in Cambridge. Sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll add that to the, the slides after. Um, so this will give you a reasonable level of quality. But it's clearly not good enough for a road sat nav because you might need to know how many lanes, which lane you're in towards the junction. And for cycle routing, we don't know, for example, is this shared with pedestrians? How wide is it? Is it possible for a cargo bike user to, to use it, or are they going to be halfway on the road or whatever? So this will give us a good enough quality, but it's, it's, really, not, not really good en it's not really good enough in my view. So here's the, um, here's the first approach that we can take which is that we model each of the flows as separate lines. So the one that I've selected is the, uh, the, the sort of cycleway on the left, the, the main bit of red here. Um, and we, we are actually modeling this correctly. We've got a, a track, it has a certain width, it has a surface. We can say that it's segregated. Uh, this is light segregation in this case, so it's sort of halfway. And so on, and, and that's fine. But as you can see, we've now ended up with four bits of hill. We've now ended up with four hills roads. There are four lines on there, um, and there are kind of lots of odd, odds. And, there are problems that then result. Um, so routing can end up with like this, um, where basically because there isn't actually a crossing in the middle of the road, um, someone's sort of half drawn on a spur to, to one side of it. You can just about see in the middle. There's a um, there's, there's a, a little bit there, but it hasn't actually been drawn in properly. And if it was, that's drawing in a cycleway that doesn't actually exist in the middle of the road. Um, but I mean, we've, I'm sure we've all come across routing, particularly pedestrian routing, that ends up with this sort of sort of thing. No one cycles like that. In reality, you can cross the road. So um, the other way to do it is the, uh, the, the uh, rather than having single, uh, the separate lines, we can model it as a single line but with lots and lots of attributes to represent the parts of the road. So how did I do this? Well, I look on the bicycle page on the wiki. I hear a few laughs, so you've obviously been there before. Um, it starts off fine. We've got the nice simple case at the top of um, uh, a road with two, a lane either side, um, how it was cycle, uh, whatever it is, and cycle it was lane. That's fine. And as we scroll down, it just gets more and more ridiculous. <laughs> Um, you end up with, um, on the left we've got there a, uh, at the top left we have a, a two lane highway, we have a cycle lane on the left, we have a cycle lane on the right, there's then a bus on the other side of it, um, and the, ta the tagging just gets more and more ridiculous. Um, no, no, no data consumer I, I'm aware of processes this kind of thing. Um, it's, uh, we certainly don't, and I'd like to think that we run probably the most advanced cycle routing in the world. Um, uh, this stuff is just unintelligible. Um, it's not a usable data model. Um, it's designed, of course, for, edit, you know, for automatic editing software like ID, where you could potentially have the lane split out, but it's still very, very subject to being broken by, by accidental changes. Um, I mean, I defy anyone to, to understand what all that means. So anyway, going back to my example, I had a go at this, and that's what I came up with. <laughs> so we've got uh, access lanes is no, 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 yes, yes, no, no. Bicycle lanes is no designated, designated, yes, yes, blah, 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 blah. Cycle backward is track, cycle backward est width, and so on. And I still think there's a problem because I can't really represent the fact that the, the left contra flow is, is, is that way. Um, but again, no one is going to use this. So we essentially have two models, that, that neither of which really work. We have this unified model, which is theoretically might work, but it's very difficult to understand, and no, it will break. And we have the multiple lanes model, which has its own problems, which I'll, I'll talk about. Um, so, so we're trying to represent a space as a set of flows. And we, we therefore have to make compromises. So one of them is junctions. So here we have the example of, um, if you look on the, 
if you look here, you're cycling along, so this is the UK, so we're on the left, I'm afraid. But um, you're cycling on here, and in theory, you have to sort of bear right, so the re and then you get, to the, uh, you get to the traffic light, and then you do a bear left. So, you know, you've got, a sort of, you've got two turns you're making. Um, in reality, this is just a normal straight road with a junction in it, with the traffic lights in the middle. And what's happened here is that we're trying to, we've made this sort of fake shape, fake geometry, um, because we want to represent the fact that cycle lane is going through a traffic light. Now, there are other ways to do that, but they also have their, their downsides. Um, here's another example. Any idea what, what this is? A any suggestions what the hell this, this thing is? Yes. So it's basically a straight road. <laughs> it's a straight road with a cycle lane on, um, and you go through this sort of um, bus gate, it is. But that's how it looks cartographically. I mean, it's ugly, isn't it? Um, I mean, this, this has been produced by one of the, this, this map is produced by one of the best cartographers in the world, in my view, but uh, even he would, it struggles to deal with this kind of data. And, and also, routing wise, what, what are the instructions that a cyclist gets? Well, they're going along, and then they're told to bear left, they go around, and then they have to make a left turn again. That's not the reality. The reality is you go straight on. So again, we, how do we represent this stuff properly in the real world? So following on from that, um, here is an example in Manhattan, New York, and quite a few of my examples are from Manhattan, where I think some of the, the, the traffic light routing in particular is particularly bad. Um, we have five first avenues. Um, this is not a map that really a sort of ordinary person would look at and understand what's going on here. Now, of course, what we actually have is a street which has a road in the middle and there's a cycle, cycle lane, uh, possibly slightly segregated, and there are, there are, there's a footway on the side. But, of course, the map, the actual cartographic map, represents these as five, um, five lanes sorry, as, as five lines, each of which has a name. Um, this is actually, cor this is correctly routable. So this works correctly for routing, but for cartography it's completely wrong. And I think the problem here is that we don't have a clear concept of a street, which is how we as humans think about it. You know, a street is a, a, an air, is a, a space with flows and, and things happening in trees and parking and traffic lights and things like that. Similarly, we don't have the concept of a junction. We just have lines and connections going through this, and somehow routing software is supposed to work out that what you're really trying to do is just go, le go right or left. Um, here's another junction. This is from Amsterdam, which I think is one of the highest quality routing um, in the world. Um, and it's, it's beautifully creating exactly what happens. You know, I've been through this, it is, it is correct. The problem is, if you imagine you're cycling from the top, and you're, so you're sort of cycling in that direction, and you're trying to get here, you're essentially doing a right turn. But, what, but if you follow the line, you're sort of, sort of going straight on. It sort of just goes around there. So is straight on that way? Is it that way? We want to represent that the cyclist should ultimately be doing a right turn through this overall space, this mass of a junction. But there's no reference point that we can actually say, you know, you're going to this point, and this, this sort of relevant point, you're turning right, essentially. But, so there's no way of telling that this is a jun actually a junction. So, you know, how, how do we actually give an instruction for the cyclist to turn right? Another example is pedestrian routing. Um, so this is back in Manhattan. We have a main street, just check the time, um, and um, there's a cycleway. Now, the way that we, um, this is a case where inconsistently we don't have the separate walkways. But um, the normal way we do this is to add the sidewalk tag to say that there is or isn't a sidewalk. So we normally expect to say sidewalk equals no. But if we put the side, but where should we put that? Do we put the sidewalk equals no on the main street or on the cycleway? Well, of course, it should be on the main street. But then, would a routing engine that's, would it be looking at the side, would a pedestrian routing engine be looking at the cycleway and saying, oh, that's where the sidewalk is? Do you see what I mean? It's sort of, there's, there's two things, and we, we kind of want the, we want the sidewalk on the right of this bit, but on the left of that bit, and nothing in the middle. There. So it's another, it's another compromise. Where, where should the walk routing put, put the pedestrian? Another example is that we can't really properly model the turns. Um, 
here we have, um, if you imagine you're cycling from here along this, in theory what the router says is turn right, turn right, turn left. What does the cyclist do? Well, they just sort of go like that. They just meander around that corner. And again, because we're trying to, we, we've got all the points coming into a single place, which correctly for routability, uh, the, the connectivity will, will, will give us a route. But it, it, we can't, we, you know, do, do we add a fake bit of bike route there that doesn't exist? I don't know, what, what do we do? How many, and here's another problem. How many times do we wait when we're going through this junction? Well, if, if we're going from the left to the right, it says we have a, a traffic light. There's another traffic light there. Now, ideally, these would have a directionality, which they don't, so there's actually two at the moment. Then we also have a crossing and another crossing. So there's two crossings. And if we'd used the ID editor, we would have a, th a third crossing here, which would have been added, which, in my view, we shouldn't have. So altogether, we could end, we, we've actually got two traffic lights and two crossings. Now, a proper router will say, well, a crossing, you should be slowing down so that you know, people can cross. And traffic light, you obviously have a wait. So we've probably got about a minute and a half to wait there, potentially, whereas really what we should have is 20 seconds, which is probably what you have to wait for the traffic light. Um, now, you could do some analysis to say, well, you know, these are kind of near each other, they're probably the same thing, but, but actually, you know, I've seen traffic lights that are quite near, but are a separate phase. Certainly in Cambridge, there's one where they're about 15 metres apart, which is the distance that's on here. So it's very difficult to sort of say, what, what do we have here? And the Arc de Triomphe is, is the worst example. It is impossible, I believe, for a router to work out how long it actually takes you to get through this junction. It needs a lot of tidying up, and it's a model that people don't understand when they're doing it. So we've got all these lights, we've got lots of, all, all the yellow dots are crossings. You get the idea, it's very difficult to work out what we're doing. Sorry? Probably not, but you know, we should at least try and make it easier for people. Um, so here's another example. Um, this is very common in, in, in New York. We have a road, and again, you're, you're supposedly going through, through, uh, through two lights. Um, another case is where the lights are not properly managed, where you're actually thinking about both the cyclist and the road. So here, if you're turning right, you actually have a traffic light there and there. We can fix this. It's this kind of thing where we basically put it in the directionality. But it's, I don't think this is really how humans perceive the junction. They see it as a junction, and there just happens to be single heads at certain points. But for routability, that's what we should have. I would say that about 90% of, of, of junctions, invo certainly involving the cy cycling in Manhattan, are completely wrong. They, there are vast numbers that simply have no weight at all for the cyclist. Pedestrian routing. Um, I would say we're barely, we're nowhere near the state of the art, unfortunately, um, because what we're trying to do is to represent, um, again, the physical locations of uh, pavements rather than a routable location. So what should we do here? I mean, again, I'm sure we've all seen this thing where it sort of loops back because it's kind of got to get to the end of the road, finds a, a connection, and then routes along. So if it, shouldn't, if it should be routable, shouldn't it be like this? Should we have lots of random, an infinite number of crossing points? Well, maybe, um, although actually pedestrians are actually the greatest Pythagorean, so it's probably more like that. <laughs> um, where, where, you know, we just randomly cross. But the point is, we, again, we, we, we're sort of trying to represent a, a space, which certainly in the UK means you can just cross the road wherever you want, unlike the US, um, at, with, with routable lines. Um, so before I come on to a couple of suggestions, what, how we can solve this, there's also the problem of where we have multiple methods to represent the same thing. So this is the cycle parking just outside. It's actually quite a large area, so I would personally have done that as an area, but, um, uh, but it's actually represented as a point. Um, which means that for users of it, of, of our data, you've got to have two different ways of processing this stuff. But ultimately, you know, even a single parking, cycle parking space is an area. It takes up you know, one meter square, roughly. Another problem which is emerging, and particularly with, the, with things like e-scooters and, and stuff, is the curbside problem. So how do we model uh, that there are, for example, um, uh, restrictions on the time that you can uh, do deliveries? So, for example, if you want to deliver to a shop, you may only be able to do it between 7 and 10 in the morning. Um, this is actually um, a diagram from State of the Map US, uh, I, which I got emailed. And what it shows at the top is we've got the black line, which is, so this is the top diagram. We've got the black line, which is the street. 
And if you look at the um, fourth, uh, the, the, the red line, the loading zone, that says that along this street, these are the, the times that you can, you can deliver. These are the times, that the green one is when you can park. So if we want to represent all these restrictions, of which there may be multiple more than might be, I don't know, bin times, I don't know, who knows. Um, we've got to do the second diagram, which is to divide the line up into lots of bits, and then say between this fourth bit and this seventh bit, there's this restriction. But the problem with that is that's very brittle, because as we see in the third diagram, if someone moves the line along, we've now lost potentially five meters of, of loading zone or whatever. So we don't really have a good way to model this, except to make it extremely complicated and difficult for anyone to maintain. So with all these sorts of problems where we're, we're kind of representing spaces as lines, I think we need the concept of a street. Um, as I say, this is not a sort of fully worked out concept, but I, I want to start a discussion. Um, what we've got here is, this was the, the one where we had the, the pedestrian routing thing. Um, what I've done is to surround the street, the, the two streets, with, with a box. Um, so there's this street going here, which actually is, uh, what's it, Somerset Close, but it also has a little spur, which is actually part of the same street. It's just we can't represent it as a, a line that spurs off because we don't have that concept in OSM. We don't have multi lines. So I've sort of surrounded it essentially by a, a red box. And what that means, and it, if you like, it's, it, it's essentially like a relation. It means we could say that everything in this box relates to this street. And so then a walk router could, for example, say, well, I've entered, uh, I've entered this walking area. I, I actually know that even though these lines are not necessarily con connected at every point, I can actually jump across the road. Um, and likewise, there's one sort of for this bit here. And you can see here, we can also then start to do things like, we could say, well, this, this loading area is within the scope of this street. We could also say for research purposes, how wide is this street? Could we, for example, upgrade the street to have cycleways, which is something we can't really do at the moment. And in fact, a project I've been doing with Leeds University, we've actually had to use the ordnance survey data because they actually have real street polygons, which we don't have. So I've just got minutes left. So, um, and we, we already actually have a similar sort of concept uh, to this, uh, which is pedestrian areas. We often map pedestrian areas, which is an area, but we also have lines going through it. And although there's duplication there, there are reasons for both, in that we need the area to show where it is, but we also have the sort of common de facto routes that people take. Um, so one way is, as I say, to sort of surround this there um, with overlapping, an overlapping uh, junction. Um, another possibility might be to tessellate them, so that we use the traditional GIS approach, which is to say that um, the whole world consists of polygons that never overlap, except obviously when you've got different layers. But you know, you can imagine that you know here, here there's a thing, and you know these these can't overlap. So, and again, we could have this this idea that you know everything within this is this street, everything within that street, and it's it's just an additional data field, additional data representation that we could put on top. Um, similarly, what about the concept of a junction? So we've got so the idea of a sort of relation of a street. What about a junction? So if you remember, this was the one where I said, you know, we don't, we've got this weird right turn, and we don't know how many things here now. What I've done here is to surround all these bits of stuff, which we do still need. We do still need to, to know that, you know, the connectivity is correct. But what I've done is to surround all of the, the bits of the, anything that's relating to the, the concept of the junction, whether that's the crossing, whether that's the actual point, the intersection, whether that's the pedestrian bit, whether that's the, the lights and so on. It's all in a junction concept. And so what we, can now, we could now say is, well, if I'm cycling from the bottom here to the right, overall, I, I, well, I can see that connectivity-wise it's correct, but my instructions to the user can be turn right. And that's rather than turn right for two meters, turn bare right for, for five meters, turn left, etc. We, we could get a much more sensible thing. And we could also then say, well, we've got one junction, we've got lots of lights within it, but we know this is a junction, and therefore we've got one delay. Um, and we could sort of connect these things together somehow. Thank you very much. <laughs> So Martin said, 
he wants he likes lots of questions so you can throw any sort of question at him i think i'm interested also if there's anyone from the baden württemberg minister of transport they might be interesting people to talk to but we've got a question up here Very interesting work. It actually reminds me of one recent project that we are working right now about indoor routing. So basically, 80% of the problems are the same. The linear model of uh, streets, what we are using, this is really good for linearly moving objects like cars. But uh, pedestrians especially, but also bicyclists are not linear, so we would need to, to have a combination of linear model and the kind of space, open space based model. So uh, you are mapping basically positive and negative space and some relations inside there, instead of uh, trying to put everything to lines. So in our project, we ended up building our own routing engine because we didn't find anyone uh, really having this for open space uh, routing. Well, of course, indoors has its own specifics and outdoors has own also, but I think the com concept of combination of linear and uh, space-based uh, model is kind of solution here. Of course, it is very difficult to map um, positive or negative space of city environment, but uh, probably we will end up with that. Oh, so just um, comment. We have a gender question? balance, hopefully. Yeah, did you, you go question? Yeah, oh. but, uh, Oh, same subject, okay. Cool. <laughs> He's thinking about the same things. Uh, anyone with a different question over there? Let's go for the lady at the back and then we'll go to the gentleman further forward. If you, yeah, can you see if you run down from there? Keep waving because he'll forget you. Um, <laughs> it's a long way to run, you can <laughs> get anything. Thank you for your talk, very interesting. We ran into the same problems uh, doing indoor routing in uh, rail railway stations. And uh, we proposed some uh, solutions on the wiki page, which is called Guidelines for Pedestrian Navigation. So I invite you to read it. And if you have any uh, advice or remarks, we are really uh, interested to share with anyone uh, on this subject. But uh, we also use uh, surface and areas inside and uh, nearby the stations, for example, uh, in front of the stations, uh, where there are yeah. very complex uh, pedestrian uh, areas. So thanks. Yeah, no, I agree. Another question? And then there's a gentleman down in the... Just, just while getting to this question, I just want to give another example is, is the problem of lanes for sat-navs, you know, that, that lanes sort of sometimes come and go. You also problem have the lane where a lane is taken up by parking, you know, that's, that's a spatial concept. Is, is that really two lanes or one when we've, you know, there's lots of areas where we have this compromise. Sorry, thank you. Um, your example with the difficult uh, street in Cambridge or in England, um, how is it solved by area mapping? Um, do we, inside the area, do you map all the flows then? So uh, the solution for this that has been adopted in Cambridge is, is indeed that. Um, so we, you know, I, I would like to think we do give very good routing for it, but I would argue cartographically it's not ideal and we have the problem of you know, the, the geometries being wrong at the junctions further up because they've got to combine and then split again, the, the, this sort of problem, so. Okay, okay thank so you. So we've got Ilya speaking now, if he comes on and picks up his slides. One thing, Martin, have you thought, maybe not, about talking, can we do anything with the local authorities? Like, that one of the US loading <laughs> times, I'm like, surely you're gonna get confused yourself. Maybe someone in the office might update it wrong, and can they just make it simpler for us? Well, my, my view is that actually, if we want, for example, good, um, good provision for cycling, we need to make sure that it is separate from traffic. So I actually think the problem is going to get much worse than better. Um, <laughs> so there's a positive next minute. But thank you very much. Thank you, Martin.